Hello and welcome to my backup presentation, which is entitled with time series encodings with temporal convolutional networks, and um, which is a joint work of uh, Wolfgang Kohn, Thomas Beck and myself. My name is Markus Till and I am currently a PhD student um, working at Cologne University of Applied Sciences. On the next slides, I would like to present an auto-encoder architecture for temporal data, um, yeah, which basically can be used to learn patterns in time series and, as we will see, um, can also be used for um, anomaly detection tasks in time series. The talk will be structured as follows. After a short introduction, I will um, present our temporal convolutional autoencoder model, and then we will take a look at the Mackie Glass Anomaly Benchmark, which we designed for um, our current paper. And then yeah, we will take a look at a few experiments, and in the end I will conclude this talk. So first let us look at the motivation for our work. A common task in practice is to detect anomalous behavior in time series. An anomaly can be defined as an event that um, deviates from what is standard, normal or expected. So for instance, um, a simple outlier could be an anomaly, but yeah, in practice we often have to deal with more complicated or complex anomalies, such as context-based anomalies. Um, so a context-based anomaly um, is when we have a value which is unusual given the current temporal context. Um, some people also consider concept changes as anomalies. Um, so a concept change is when a statistical property of a yeah, certain target variable changes over time. Yeah, so obviously there are many um, applications of anomaly detection algorithms, for instance in fraud detection or network monitoring tasks, um, but also for medical purposes, for instance um, for ECG data. On this slide I have two examples for um, context-based or temporal anomalies. So um, as we can see, we don't have any um, visible outliers in the data, but um, nevertheless, um, both time series um, contain um, an anomaly. However, for the human eye, these anomalies don't um, seem to be um, yeah, immediate, immediately apparent and um, yeah, the task for an algorithm would be to um, yeah, learn the underlying structure of the um, whole time series and then try to identify um, the unusual parts in it. So here we can see where the position of the anomalies actually are in both time series. Um, you might have already noticed that these time series are Mackie Glass time series, and I will later shortly describe a little bit how um, we can yeah, generate Mackie Glass time series and then also insert anomalies which are not trivial. The contributions of our paper are twofold, so we will present um, our our temporal convolutional autoencoder, which is um, yeah, a sequential architecture and can use uh, for time series, for instance, for representation learning or for anomaly detection. We will see two examples later. And the second contrib contribution is our Mackie Glass anomaly benchmark, which is a synthetic benchmark um, based on Mackie Glass time series. Um, nevertheless, um, the benchmark is non trivial and it contains well defined anomalies which are quite hard to spot for the human eye and also for some algorithms. So on the next few slides, I will give a high level overview um, of the temporal convolutional autoencoder and yeah, describe a few um, important aspects of it. So the main idea of um, our autoencoder architecture is it to take a time series and to encode it in a significantly shorter um, sequence. So usually um, yeah, one would take a time series and compress it by a factor of, for instance, 32 or 64 or something in that range. Then um, the second part of the autoencoder is a decoder, which takes the uh, compressed sequence and tries to reconstruct the original time series again. Um, an interesting observation that we made is that um, the reconstruction error of the decoder um, can be used as an indicator for anomalous behavior. 
So this approach is um, yeah, similar to um, a classical outer encoder. Um, however, um, in our architecture, we will use so-called dilated convolutional layers, um, which are more flexible with respect to the input size. And um, another interesting property of um, dilated convolutions is that we can easily create a large receptive field um, yeah, which is especially for time series um, an important property. One important ingredient of our architecture is a so-called dilated convolution operation, um, which got quite popular recently in um, neural network architectures. So the idea um, is that instead of applying um, a filter to adjacent points of the input sequence, we now have a um, dilation rate, which defines how many elements in the input signal are skipped between two filter tabs. Here we see an example of the WaveNet paper, and we can see that on the first layer we have a dilation rate of 1, that is basically um, a regular convolution um, with a filter of length 2. Then on the next layer we have a dilation rate of 2, um, that means that um, yeah, always um, the filter tab is applied to every second element of the sequence. Then on the next layer we have a dilation rate of 4 and so on. And in the final layer we have a dilation rate of 8. Um, yeah, and by using these um, increasing dilation rates from layer to layer, we can um, easily create an architecture with a um, large receptive field. In this case, an exponentially increasing re receptive field. A temporal convolutional network is nothing else than yeah, an architecture which uses these dilated convolutions in combination with um, yeah, some other layers. And um, the main idea is to use um, these residual blocks as shown here on the left side and stack them on top of each other to create a TCN architecture. So on the right side, we see um, such an architecture as we use in, in our work. So we first start with a residual block where um, yeah, dilated convolutional layers with a dilation rate of um, Q equals one is used. Then the next residual block would have a dilation rate of two and so on. And for um, all blocks, we use 20 filters and we have a kernel size of 20. Now we can use the TCN to create our own autoencoder model. So what our autoencoder does, it takes an input of length t and a dimension d and first passes it through um, our TCN, which yeah, has dilation rates from 1 to 16. So yeah, basically we have um, five residual blocks. Then the resulting um, signal is passed through our bottleneck, which um, consists of a conf1d layer, which basically just reduces the, dimension, the dimensionality of the sequence. And then we have a temporal average pooling layer, which um, yeah, um, downsamples our signal along the time axis. So in our case, we use a downsampling factor of 42. And um, yeah, the output of our encoder will be a signal which is um, downsampled by a factor of um, 42 and has a dimension 8. So this sequence then in the decoder is first upsampled again. Um, in our case, we just use a simple um, sample and hold upsampling or sometimes also called nearest neighbor, nearest neighbor um, interpolation. And and this signal then is passed again through a TCN and um, the final conf1d layer then um, yeah, produces our output with the um, length t and dimension d again. For anomaly detection tasks, we could now take the reconstruction uh, reconstruction and compare it to the original signal and yeah, use the um, reconstruction error to um, find anomalous behavior in the time series. Before we discuss a few results, let's take a fast look at the Mackie Glass anomaly benchmark, which we um, designed for this paper. 
so we call, uh, use the um, magic glass equation to um, generate our time series. Um, the equation itself has several parameters which can be selected and depending on the choice of them um, the, um, the overall system will develop um, yeah, different patterns of chaotic behavior. Um, yes, yeah, so we use um, a Python package to um, generate our time series. The um, insertion process of anomalies is as follows. So we first um, generate a um, time series signal um, using the Mackey Glass equation, and then we um, yeah, calculate the first few derivatives of the signal. And the idea is now to um, to split the time series in two points and to stick the two ends of the time series back together again. And um, the points um, where we yeah, cut open the time series um, are chosen in a way that um, the two points are very similar so that we um, cannot notice that the um, time series was um, yeah, cut open in this specific position. Um, for more details on the benchmark, you can refer to our GitHub page. Um, there you can also download some code to generate your own time series. So here we have an example of how um, an anomaly is inserted into a Mackey Glass time series. Um, the blue dashed curve is the original time series and the orange curve is the manipulated one which contains the anomaly. So as we can see here, it's really not that easy um, to actually find the position of the anomaly. Um, so now let us take a look at the few results that we obtained. So what we wanted to see in the beginning is what kind of rep representations our autoencoder um, actually learns. So what we did is we generated quite a lot of um, different Mackey Glass time series um, using um, varying time delay parameters. So we used values from 11 to 20 and we wanted to see what our autoencoder actually learns. So um, yeah, what we did is we created a lot of sequences of length 256 and then um, use the autoencoder to um, reduce the length uh, to a value of 2. So that means we have a compression rate of 128. This is how the results look like. So our autoencoder is actually able to um, separate the different um, time series quite well. Uh, for a value of tau equals 11, the cluster is quite small. And um, yeah, as tau increases, um, the clusters are also um, stretched a little bit, but uh, nevertheless, the autoencoder is still able to um, separate all of um, the different time series quite well. For comparison purposes, we use TSNE to map the same data to a two dimensional space. And as we can see here, um, TSNE has more problems in. Um, clustering um, the time series according um, to their values of tau. In our next experiment, we wanted to see how our TCN autoencoder performs on an anomaly um, detection task. So what we did is we created um, a several Mackey Glass time series and inserted anomalies into these. And yeah, what we did then is we run our algorithm um, overall time series and then compared the results to four other state-of-the-art algorithms. Overall, our algorithm performed quite well, actually. So um, as we can see in the column TP, which stands for true positives, our algorithm found 90 of the 100 anomalies and at the same time also doesn't produce too many false positives as we can see in the column FP. So on average we only have like 0.2 false positives. This also then leads to quite high precision and recall values. So we have a precision of 1 and um, a recall of 0.91 um, which is higher than the other algorithms. Um, the, the F1 score, which is basically the harmonic mean of precision and recall, is also um, higher than for the other algorithms, although it might not be significantly higher than LSTM AD. However, the other um, three algorithms are outperformed quite significantly. So after this very short summary of our results, we are almost already at the end of my talk and I would like um, yeah, to give a conclusion and an outlook to future work. In our paper, we proposed a temporal convolutional um, 
autoencoder architecture, um, which can be used for different tasks, for instance, um, for representation learning or for anomaly detection time series. Furthermore, we introduced the Mackey Glass Anomaly Benchmark, which is a synthetic benchmark with non trivial anomalies. Yes, yeah, since our architecture is quite simple, we are planning to um, add enhancements to it in future. So, um, one idea that we had is to um, yeah, add some feature reuse capabilities. That means we want to add skip connections from um, different dilated convolutional layers to, to later layers, which um, appears to also reduce the sensitivity towards the dilation rate. And we are also planning to investigate um, other enhancements like different types of bottlenecks and um, yeah, we are also planning to um, apply our architecture to real-world and Mali detection tasks. Um, at the moment, we are looking at ECG signals and the results are also looking promising there. And that's it. Thank you very much for your attention.